Hi, this is Bob Parker again, uh, LMU alumni, class of 89, finance major, uh, two kids I put through LMU. Um, and I think this next workshop that I'm gonna take you through, again, maybe seven or eight slides. Um, a couple of them is, the, the first is gonna be around um, building credit. Uh, what is credit? How do I get credit? Is credit too much credit? Um, and the second one I think is really important, which is how do I calculate a payment, right? Um, I had a class at LMU in real estate finance where the professor taught us how to use the HP 12C. And then one of the most powerful things on that I learned was on the fly how to calculate the payment of anything and how to break out what was principal and interest. Um, and that's helped me throughout my entire career from either buying real estate, buying cars, any of that sort of stuff. Um, and, and really thinking and planning and budgeting for things that are important. So let's talk a little bit about building credit and debt. So currently you probably have little or no credit. Your credit is probably an extension of your parents' credit. They've probably given you a credit card with your name on it, but they pay the bill. Um, not, I might be pejorative there, but that's just my guess because that's what I do with my kids. Um, but you need to really think about, um, as you progress here, you need to think about what credit is and how to use it to your advantage, because it can sneak up on you and be a real pain and a thorn in your side if you don't do it right. First and foremost, with everything uh, being digitized, your credit score can be tracked online today, and it is tracked in real time. And really what it suggests is what your personal loan worthiness is. What is the likelihood of the, and the character of this person and, and be able to loan them credit? Do they have a history of paying their bills? Do they have too much credit? Do they seek out too much credit? Every time you ask for a credit report to be done on a house or a car or a boat or whatever, they ping your credit system. And just pinging your credit system says that you have an appetite for credit, which actually turns out to be a negative score. So. You need to be very judicious when you think about building credit. Um, you know, options for credit are car loans, and many of you have student loans and low interest credit cards. Um, you know, getting those, getting an interest rate is a, that's, that's attractive is a function of your credit and a function of your ability to make those payments, right? You must, once you get credit, you must make routine monthly payments. Delays or less than required amounts on a monthly basis will impact your credit score negatively. And when your credit score gets done negatively, it winds up costing you money. So my last seminar was about free money. This is how you lose money, is if you are drunk and disorderly with your credit, you're gonna get nothing but bad decisions and choices to be made around your credit worthiness and what you'll need to pay. So be very, and by the way, it takes a long time to clean up a credit report. Um, sometimes, I don't know what the current laws are, but sometimes those things can stay on your credit report for five years, which means even though you were an, an idiot five years ago, and now you're an upstanding citizen with a family, they still go back and look at what you did five years ago, and they can still burn you for it. So be very careful about it. What I would suggest as a way of starting to build credit and I have some suggestions in terms of websites, get a low interest credit card, put a little bit on it, pay it off, put a little bit more on it, pay it off, put a little bit more on it, pay it off. And you will actually be able to monitor the increase in your credit worthiness. And that translates into lowest interest rates on cars and houses and boats, um, which will save you tens and tens of thousands of dollars over the course of your lifetime. So um, apply for low interest, no annual fees. There is so much competition out there for credit cards right now. You know, people are willing to give you something um, that's low interest. There are no low or no annual fees. And I have some examples here. Um, you know, the ebb and flow of charging to your credit card and making the minimum or entire payment will continue to add to your credit, your FICO score. You can find your credit scores here. It's kind of hard to read, but it, you know, it talks about um, investopedia.com and we'll get this out in some other way so you can see it, but top websites for checking your credit. So it's amazing once you get out into the workforce and start building it up, everybody manage, manages and monitors your credit. 
Um, and then the other thing here is I've sent Nerd Wallet has the best credit cards for college students. So I would encourage you to, if you feel like you need to get a credit card and you feel like you have the, uh, the discipline and the wherewithal to do exactly what I said, which is buy things on it, pay it off, buy things on it, pay it off. I would suggest you go onto this website on Nerd Wallet and see if you can find a credit card that actually might meet your uh, requirements and specifications. But remember, low interest rates and low or no annual fees is what you're after. All right, this is, uh, again, I, I probably belabor this one too much, but it's um, a very important concept, right? So I sip, a, a simple calculation using Excel is what I'm gonna give you as an example here. You can calculate a mortgage payment, a car payment, a payment back to a friend, you can bifurcate interest versus principal. So you know how much interest you get to write off your taxes. Even if you don't know how to do that, you'll still get that from your uh, mortgage provider, your 1099. But nonetheless, it is a pretty interesting um, thing to, to understand and be able to understand how fast you can afford to pay back loans. Many times it makes sense to take a short-term loan knowing that the increments in which you're paying above and beyond the minimum is actually moving the principal down very quickly. Um, so the amount of your payment is a function really of three things. The amount you borrow, the interest rate, again, the interest rate is a function of your credit report, and the term. The term is how long. For mortgages, banks generally in the old days preferred a 20% down payment and that your total mortgage payment, including property taxes, insurance, and homeowners association dues, if there are any, will be no more than 33% of your gross income. So if you make $10,000 a month, the bank would like, and they'll give you preferable interest rates if you have a 20% down payment. And that your mortgage payment after that 20% down payment is no more than $3,300 a month, assuming your, your gross income is $10,000 a month, okay? Income to debt ratios are also important. The other thing they'll look at is, well, that's great that if his mortgage payment uh, in a vacuum is one third of their gross, but how much more debt do they have relative to their income? So that's another thing. If you have an aspiration to buy a condo or a house or something like that, you may wanna push up the car conversation for a while, or you may wanna push on um, paying off the student loan as fast as you can, right? Um, those are all things you need to think about, but you know, it, it's a very important thing and I've used it more times in my life than I can choose to remember. So what I've done for you all here is I've done two things. This is a simple example off to the left and then what I've given you is the formulas in Excel, very easy to copy, okay? Basically a house price, if you put 80%, 20% down, $400,000 house, your mortgage would be 320,000 bucks, interest rate of two and a half years on 30 year note, which is about right today. Interest rates are at all time lows. Your monthly mortgage payment would be $1,265, which I guarantee you is probably less than you're paying in rent around LMU right now. If your gross income is $75,000 and your monthly gross is 6250, one third of that number would be 2083. That assumes no other debt, no other debt. So under this scenario, you would be moving through the bank loan process fairly quickly, right? He has no, she has no other debt. Her payments are less than her gross, one third less than her gross. Um, but you have to remember the other things that come into play when you're trying to buy a house here, right? So now we're saying, well, wait a minute, you got the property taxes you got to pay, which is in California is one and a quarter percent of the sales price. You have to estimate what your house insurance, any home association dues are. And now we're at 2181, which is bigger than the 2083, 34.9% of their gross monthly would be the, um, the mortgage would be as a percentage of the gross monthly. So now you're close, right? So the mortgage, um, the, the bank may ask for a bigger down payment. The, you could look at a different interest rate, a different term. Um, you could look at unloading some debt you have because you have some cash in the bank, but this is how it works. It's a very simple model. And over to the right, what I've done for you here is I've provided you the formulas. 
right? And probably the biggest, it's not a hard formula, but the biggest, most important formula there is to get the payment right, right? The monthly mortgage, and it's a, it's a, it's a very easy formula to write in Excel that basically takes the interest rate, divides it by 12 because you're paying 12 monthly. It takes the term, which is 30 years, multiplies it by 12 because you're paying 360 times and then takes the inverse of the house or the mortgage a negative version in order to calculate the right payment, not a negative payment, but a positive payment on an HP 12 C or in Excel. Um, having this little framework together should be able to help you think about the sequence of how I take debt, what my aspirations are in terms of home ownership, uh, car ownership, whatever it may be. And then the last words on credit management, um, you know, there's a couple of things in here that people are a little surprised at. One, it says your credit score will be around you your entire life. It's gonna follow you forever, right? So I suggest you keep it as high as possible. That gives you optionality and gives you leverage. You should routinely check your credit score. In the past, you had to pay for it. Today, it's free. A lot of people will give you free credit scores. A lot of banks provide that as a service now, just in a, in a monthly email, right? The more you apply for credit, the more your credit score will suffer. It makes logical sense. The more the bank thinks you have an appetite for bu buying bright, bright, shiny new things, the more they think you're a risk. Credit is borrowing money. You are borrowing money and you need to repay it. And then the last one, which I'm not sure a lot of people really get until they get to be about mid-20s, late-20s, is that you will inherit all the debt and credit worthiness of a spouse should you consider to get married. So choose wisely. You will inherit his or her student loan debt. You will inherit his or her car payment. So if you wind up going down this route of wanting to get married, and I'm all for it, choose wisely. Think about the person that you're going to be hitched to for the rest of your life and whether or not they have the discipline and have the same ways of thinking, because I have seen situations where people didn't choose wisely, inherited a bunch of debt, and got themselves into a lot of trouble. I hope this helped. My name is Bob Parker again, graduated Valamy from 1989, and I appreciate your time.